Lisa, I did have one of those Catholic yeah. Yeah. It is good, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Hi. I'm Mary Lou. I met you at the I'm from Culver Lake. Yeah, that's right. How are you? Good. I met um I talked to the people from that um organization. The kids oh, out there, I can't believe Youth Coalition? What? The Youth Coalition. Oh, they're oh, wonderful. They were so sweet, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I like everything that, that they're doing. Yeah. And it would be good to get back to that for them. And We were thinking of that, you know, working together in our town, creating a, another nonprofit, and then for uh, specifically for the youth. Yeah. You know, yeah. and they need it. It's needed. I work in the schools, but they need it. Yeah, hey, yours was on simple, Mom. Okay. I would just turn it off. Are you? I can turn it off if you want yours off. I'm just joking. I'm going in. I have here. So it's around. Everybody, please rise for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and to the law, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll take a moment uh, to pray while we do that today. Uh, please keep in your prayers. Uh, Mr. James Anders, who is a correction officer with Trumbull County Sheriff's Office that we lost this week. So we lost a member of the Trumbull County family. And our thoughts and prayers are with uh, his family at this time. So please bow your heads and pray in your own way. Amen. Yeah, our next public workshop will be Tuesday, March 5th at 10.30 a.m. in this room. And our next regular meeting will be Wednesday, March 6th at 10.30 a.m. also in this room. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll. Mr. Cantola Mesa. Here. Ms. Brunchko. Here. Mr. Malloy. Here. Item number one is to dispense with reading the minutes of the regular meeting dated February 22nd, 2024, and accept and approve the video recordings of the February 22nd, 2024 regular meeting as the official meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion for the um, uh, workshop. There was no workshop. Is that why? Was there a workshop to have meeting minutes? Why is it not on here? Normally they're on here as well. Hey, can we, um, Mr. Cantilla okay, well, So hang on. I'm just going to make a comment then. I, I listen to the meetings. I go back onto YouTube and regularly I hear people talking over each other and you can't hear who's actually speaking. There are about. They can't hear you right now, Commissioner, because you're not speaking in the right, microphone. There are about three or four people talking over each other, even yesterday. And um, when you're trying to argue that you're using the audio and video recording and you, you can't identify who's talking, that doesn't comply uh, with even what they're trying to say that they're doing relative to um, 
doing the meeting minutes. And also there are moments in time where it skips it, on a regular basis when you're listening to these meetings online or you're going back and watching them on YouTube, it cuts out for a few seconds at a time and you can't tell who's saying things. And I think that that needs to be addressed. Again, I, I think that what we should be doing really is just good old fashioned meeting minute taking like it, it used to be, but in a proper way. Mr. Cantela Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Um, because I don't believe that they're being done properly. Uh, no. Okay, and I'll make a motion then from the floor um, to dispense with the reading of the workshop meeting dated February 21st and accept and approve the, the video recordings of the February 21st workshop meeting as the official workshop meeting minutes. No second. Do you know why it's not on? Did you review them? It, it was on, I know it was on the radio, or I'm sorry, it was on streamed and it was on YouTube. I'm saying there could be a reason why it's not on the agenda. Have they gotten, there could be that there were complaints about it skipping or something like that. Is there any reasons of that sort? Oh. It's just, so you're just going ahead and approving them as a blank without. I know they were on. I, I did rewatch a large portion of them last week. There's also a there's also a corresponding um, record that I have. I don't believe that either of you have read for the workshop. There's a co corresponding written record of minutes that's not completed yet. I don't believe. So you didn't review that either. I said I just approved the video recording. I didn't approve the written record. Right. So I've, with with the video recording, there's a supplemental uh, written one, right? Yes. So is that completed yet? Yes. Okay. We I, we didn't review it, but if you want to vote and approve something that hasn't been seen by you, that's fine. Do it. Do you always do? Can you call the vote, please. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Mr. Cantola Mesa. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. No. Item number two is to approve the bills. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantela Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. You did read all the bills. You looked over all the bills and read them all. Just asking. Number three. Item number three is to approve the 4D service agreement provider contract between the Trumbull County Clerk of Courts and the Trumbull County Department of Job and Family Services Child Support Enforcement Division for the 4D program child support activities for the period of January 1st, 2024 through December 31st, 2024. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantola Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Um, because this was done so late and not even sent down to the state for approval until close to the end of January. Um, no, I just think we need to make a better practice of making sure our department heads do things in a timely fashion. So. Again, that was discussed at the workshop yesterday, and that's not true, but um, everybody watched the workshop. The prosecutor's office was there as well. Right, right. I, I, I saw it as well, and I got follow-up information this morning that neither of you received, and it demonstrates that it wasn't even sent down until about the, well, I think one of them was the 19th of January. So while he's saying it took, he sent it to the state and then the state approved it late. The point is, is it got sent to the state late as well. Go ahead. It doesn't matter. That's fine. It doesn't matter. It's, it's an ongoing program. Time or properly. It's okay. None of it matters. I, I hear you loud and clear. What, what matters is actually agree, uh, approving these agenda items. I, item number four is to approve the 4D service agreement provider contract between the Trumbull County Department of Job and Family Services, Child Support Enforcement Division, and the Trumbull County Prosecutor's Office for the 4D program child support activities for the period of January 1st, 2024 through December 31st, 2024. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantela Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. And for the same reasons that this wasn't even initiated, it was about close to a month after the um, contract was supposed to start now. 
Item number five is to approve the purchase of one 2022 Ford Bronco Sport and one 2021 Ford Explorer from Mark Thomas Ford in the total amount of $54,410 after the trade-in of one 2016 Dodge Durango and one 2016 Jeep Cherokee for a total of $13,000. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number six is to acknowledge receipt of the proposal for the TRU first 2024 countywide road improvements for paving programs for the townships of Brookfield, Champion, Howland, Hubbard, Newton and Warren, the village of Lordstown and the cities of Hubbard and Niles, in addition to Trumbull County's Everett Hall Road, Warren Meadville Road, Brookfield Avenue, Durst Colebrook Improvements Project, and to authorize the Board of Commissioners Clerk to advertise for sealed bids for the TRU first 2024 countywide road improvements project. Motion to approve. Second the motion. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number seven is to concur with the Trumbull County engineer to grant the right-of-way permits requested by the companies listed. And those companies are Half Acre Lumber, LLC, and Dominion East Ohio. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number eight is to concur with the county engineer to grant the special annual supplier fleet permit for the fleet vehicles requested by the company listed. And that company is Zeeland Freight Services, LLC. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number nine is to concur with the county engineer to grant the special hauling permit to haul steel coils on Trumbull County roadways requested by the company listed, and that company is JRO Transportation Services, Inc. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number 10 is to concur with the county engineer to grant the special hauling permits to move overweight equipment over Trumbull County roadways requested by the company listed and that company's Midwest land clearing. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number 11 is to adopt a resolution authorizing the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners to apply for, accept, and enter into a project year 2024 water pollution control loan fund agreement for the repair and replacement of home sewage treatment systems, HSTS, and to authorize Danny Malloy, president of the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners, to sign any and all documents. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number 12 is to accept the retirement of James J. Frederica, custodian in the Trumbull County Building Maintenance Department, effective March 1st, 2024. Motion to approve. Second the motion. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number 13 is to designate the following listed professional design firms as pre-qualified pursuant to ORC 153.68 for purposes of future professional design projects with an estimated design fee of under $50,000 during the calendar year 2024. Motion to approve. I'll second that. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number 14 is to establish the creation of the Federal Transit Administration Grant Fund to be known as Fund Number 202 for use by the Trumbull County Transit Office. The Federal Transit Authority has awarded a 50-50 Flex Funds Grant of $296,357 to the Western Reserve Transit Authority through the Ohio Department of Transportation. Trumbull County is responsible for the local match of 296,357 of which Warren City has agreed to pay half 2,900 2,900 
$296,357. Sorry about that. For a total of $148,178.50. These monies will be administered at the county level. The grant will fund the, the operation of two fixed routes in Trumbull County that will run Monday through Friday for the purpose of providing public transit services to the general public in Trumbull County for a period of one year, approximately March 2024 through March 2025. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantela Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Franchko? Yes. Item number 15 is to authorize on behalf of the Trumbull County Department of Job and Family Services the contracts per list dated February 21st, 2024. Contracts create 25 training opportunities at a total cost of 183697 17 Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantela Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number 16. Motion to table number 16. Motion dies for lack of a second. Item number 16 is to appoint Mario Cantalamesa to serve as the official representative for the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners on the Trumbull Community Action, Action Program, TCAP, Board of Directors, for a six-year term effective March 1st, 2024, and ending March 1st, 2030. Motion to approve. Second that. Ms. We need to have some discussion on this. I know that there have been times this year earlier where you said this is an election year so it probably wouldn't be appropriate to have uh, one of the commissioners running for office to be uh, designated to be on the board so this organization will i don't know if either of you are honestly familiar with what they do but, no offense but um they they send out anytime there's an applicant or an approval or anything they they include the name of their board members on the side of their letterhead so this is going to be something that will be going out on a, every single correspondence with all of the people in that organization who are served are going to get Mario Cantalamesa's name on their letter and i just think that it, if anyone it should be you uh, because it's it is an election year and to hold with what you've presented in the past uh, I don't believe that it should be done in this fashion. And the, secondly, uh, the reason my concern is, is if this organization wants to have a member of the uh, of government participating on their board, then they should request that that body identify who it is. It causes concern when the director picks who they want to be their board member. And I saw that in the letter. And, in, and customarily, whenever there is... Um, a board appointment, then there's a process. And we don't even know if this fulfills their process because all we have is a letter from, from the director saying, hey, I want him to be on my board. So for those two reasons, I would ask that you, um, the, the president. I'm gonna read aloud the, the letter from Van Nelson, the director of TCAP. Trimble County Action Program has vacancy on its uh, board of directors. The board is to be uh, tripartite, meaning that there should be public sector members, private sector members, and members who represent the low low income population in Trumbull County. We, not he, we are asking Commissioner Morrow Cantalamesa to accept the invitation to join the TCAP Board of Directors representing the public sector. Terms are six years in length and are renewable. What do the bylaws say relative to filling the appointments? Do you know what there, the bylaws say? There have always been commissioners on the I board. I understand that, but bylaws... And, and the mayor is on the board as I well. Don't know. Okay, whenever you're, it's a nonprofit, bylaws govern the activity of how certain things happen, pr processes. <laughs> so I, I'm asking, because I know that I have not seen their bylaws to identify how they go about filling board vacancies. And that's something that I think that we need to look at. And overall, it looks like a... A highly political thing um, to be. I'm not asking to be on it. They're asking me to be on it. Okay. That's what I know. I understand. I I get it. I get it. People have certain alliances throughout 
the county and this is going to be on there honestly their letterhead every single person who's associated is going to get his, his name on it you i would suggest seriously looking at uh all of the correspondence requesting to find out how many pieces of mail go out from that organization uh, uh but I, I i guess i hear what you're saying but i don't see how it'd be fair anyway ron it's a six-year term right. so i'll be up for election as a board member for this too in a couple of years you would be up for election now if it was you they're asking, they're looking to fill a board seat now and so we should wait until after the primary after the general give them a year i mean there is never a time when somebody isn't i mean we're in a political job in a sense this isn't a political seat per se. It's a public service sector seat that they've had the commissioner on in the past for many, many, many boards. We've, for some reason, after, since Frank Fuda left, they didn't replace it with a commissioner. And they're reaching out saying, hey, we need a commissioner again. I hope you see that. Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't see TCAP as being Republican, Democrat. I mean, they're nonprofit. They shouldn't be playing politics with that. And as far as their bylaws, I guess it's not our job to look at their bylaws. It's their job to look at their bylaws to see if they are following their rules, not for us to, to, to say, Hey, that that's your thing, but we need to look at your bylaws to make sure it's legal for you to do this to me. I, I don't, I don't get that. Make an appointment from our collective body. I think we owe, we need to do due diligence to make sure that we're appointing something that is proper and compliant. And, and understandably so, you would be up for election in a year. And then at that point in time, if you want to stay true to not not be hypocritical in what your position statement was, then at that point in time, that, that could be rescinded and switched out. I'm just I'm just trying to make a, a suggestion to um, eliminate the appearance of um, politics associated with this appointment. How is there an appearance of politics? I don't even know these people. They reached out to me. You don't know. Again, I know Van Nelson to say hello and to work with him, but that's about it. You don't, okay. I mean, over the years, so you, you, you act know, like there's some so you secret backdoor any, meetings so you, or anything. Again, so and then on a, on a side note, whenever and whenever there's a a board, a director, and they pick their person that they want to be on the board, and they're picking someone who doesn't know their organization, doesn't know what they do, doesn't they know, know their, their organization. organization. What, what are but the you're, so, you're saying, not, what, what is your organization? I don't have to explain myself to you, Commissioner. I, I don't work for you. Yesterday, you didn't even know the name of the organization. You thought it was Trumbull, a Trumbull County Board. It's not. I said Trumbull County Action Program. It's not. It's Trumbull Community Action Program, and they, they implement a lot of services that have nothing but to sure, do with I've been on this board work. for nine years. I know exactly what they implement. Tell I've worked with Van Nelson. Tell me, like, please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Please I know you do. want to make this political and I know you want to argue, but I'm not going to feed into it. it. Let's move on. Please. Take so I, I would remind you, and I don't, I don't mean to open this Pandora's box, but you just appointed Melissa Phillips, who's a, a director of a nonprofit yes, to did. represent you on the planning commission yes. against their board's bylaws. And she got in a lot of hot water over it, deflection. but that was her thing. This is deflection. And because we're talking about something else. And that was not even the same thing. A designee for a person is not the same thing as an appointment by the board. I'm not asking to be appointed, rights. Commissioner. They're asking me to be appointed. If you want to vote no, vote no. Yeah, I I, I don't see the... You're, you're helping. The, I hope you see. You're helping? You're, I don't see how this is political. I don't see this as a, this is a community organization of... Do you know what they do? Do you know how many applicants they get a year and how many pieces of correspondence go out with the people's names on uh, there? Apparently, you looked into it politically, so you do know. I don't know how many pieces of exactly. paper they send out. To table it so that you can just at least have a week to look into it. So I can look into it and say, nope, I'm going to screw the Democrat on the board because he's a Democrat and I'm not putting him on there because he might get publicity being on a mailing to serve the public. It has nothing to do with it. doesn't anything. make any, any sense or, either. Or, or looking into you know, how the board is, um, the bylaws. We all are on different boards. We've all volunteered to be on different boards. We've all accepted appointments to be on different boards. You did bring up that I should be on this. I'm on the 911 review board. I'm on many other boards that we have. I'm, right. I think it's fair to share the wealth with the other commissioners. Um, there are boards that you, you were on also, and that's great too. We, all three of us should share the workload when it comes to boards. They reached out to commissioner Kendall Mesa, we talked about it yesterday and discussed it. I didn't see any conflict that this was a political thing yesterday. So just take a take more than a more than um just 
taking what someone tells you and doing it. Take it. Take a moment to look into it. I, that's I am familiar with Van Nelson also. Okay. He's a, a very reputable citizen in the county. Does a lot of good for the county. I couldn't see, or I would be very shocked if if he is playing politics with this to put somebody's. It's a shame that we're dragging this man that. I, I would the mud and a great organization. Just this vote yes or no, please. Yeah, call the question. Mr. Cantala Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Uh, yes. Ms. Frunchko. No. Okay, believe it or not, that concludes our business already for the day. It was a very short agenda. Um, so at this time, we'll open up uh, for my colleagues first. If we have anything for the good of Trumbull County about business to bring up, I know we have some guests in the crowd also um, that have um, some business they'd like to bring to our attention. Uh, anyone on the board first, or should we go to the public? Well, one of the things that um, came up yesterday, and I believe that I'm already pointed, it was related to the um, Board of Revision. And I, I, I believe I was already appointed to the Board of Revision. The three of us are, yes. And there... Okay. There was talk yesterday okay. about... about Organized in January. Not appointed to on the hearing card to report if you were appointed on the land bank portion, as far as I understand. And that oh, was I... last year. It was reorganized in January. We did not have an appointment from the commissioners um, for that. And we request, we asked, I was told by or asked by the board of revision. No one attended that reorganization meeting, which sent to you guys. Um, we asked for an appointment for someone who is going to be on the hearing board, somebody to be the representative. <clears throat> we also asked for an alternate because we may be doing two boards. And I, I, so tax review, tax review is what I was talking about then I yeah. guess that we, the three of us were on, put on last week. Yeah, this isn't the tax incentive review council. It's the board of revisions. Yeah. Okay. Right. Their property values. Those hearings will start. The, right now, people can file those complaints. Um, it's also my understanding that you wish to file a complaint. You did take a complaint form, so that would be a conflict of interest if you would like. Only to hear my own, and I would know enough not to uh, um, participate in that a conflict. But again, this is with the, yeah. the board decision. Again, the majority of the board chooses. I understand the, the majority of the board. Damn, can we get Martha a microphone, please? And, and, and we said, and and it was said yesterday that the two commissioners that were being considered for this would get a quick little appraisal 101 class from the person who works for the math appraisal company by auditor. Yosef yes, because here. I think it is important for whoever to understand exactly what mass appraisals right. are um, and understand what they're looking at. I do think it's a good idea to have an education and uh Mr. Constance from Integrity has volunteered to do that at my request. So um, what we need, we'll, we'll begin scheduling those Board of Revision complaints fairly soon. Um, we will uh, need someone who, with availability for that. Hopefully we will have a quorum whether we have a commissioner there or not. We may end up having two separate boards. We can do that under the Ohio Revised Code. Um, and if we do, that's why we would like an alternate because of that. We're not sure yet where we're at on that. Um, I think we're probably somewhere around 40 complaints so far. They are picking up. Um, so we may be able to get through all of those with only one board, but we'll see. We'll know more. We have a board of revision meeting on the 18th. And at that meeting, we will do our, we will vote on those appointments to, to journalize those appointments. Um, I am appointing uh, my chief appraiser, uh, Bud McDermott, as my representative and my senior appraiser, uh, Phil Anarella, as my um, alternate. So if we have to seat two. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head who Treasurer Lamancusa is appointing. Probably Mike Robinson for the initial board. And I think he was looking at Bethany Klein for his um, 
for the alternate. I don't, like I said, I won't know if we need an alternate or not. Um, what we need from the board, and we talked about putting it on the agenda and I, for this for today, but we can put it, I will give something to Lisa for next week. What we'll need is um, what who you choose as the board's representative, and it doesn't have to be one of you. It can also be an employee as is, as I've chosen, and an alternate. And then at our 18th meet, at meeting on the 18th, we will journalize all the appointments before we start in with hearings. But because we're starting to schedule them, it's helpful for us to know, it was helpful for us to know who the board intends to appoint because we will be reaching out for your schedules to be able to accommodate you so that hopefully we will have all three members of the board at these hearings or as many hearings as possible. Um, we are we can't schedule hearings for the board of revision complaints until first of all they can't be scheduled to happen until after april 1st because that's the deadline but we also when we receive a complaint there has to be a month space before we even set that schedule uh we're getting close to uh the end of the second month of these complaints coming in, we would like to take all of the January, the ones we received in January and start getting them on the schedule so that if there's problems or issues with scheduling, particularly with the people who've made those complaints, that we can accommodate them. So we were trying to give us, give us plenty of time. We want to, we're trying to make this process as efficient as we possibly can and as friendly to the taxpayers as we possibly can. How many complaints do you have? I just explained that we had round 40 at this time. Yeah, so far, yeah. We haven't had, it was either 40 or 50. I haven't checked for a couple of days. We They are coming in more rapidly now. Um, we do, I would say a, there's probably um, close to 50% of those are actually from one development, one condo development. So we have, there's a lot, we're not gonna, we can't hear those all at the same time. That doesn't work that way. They have, we have to hear them as individuals. Um, they are coming in more rapidly. We will, um, start seeing that. Um, I'm surprised that, that there's only 40 or 50. We get a lot of phone calls. I told everybody. We get a lot of phone calls. We've sent out a lot of, we had uh, last it, we week. We get phone calls too. I know you do. Well. Trust sure. me, we get yeah. more. Um, we, <laughs> we get we get threats. We get bad language we, before they even start talking to uh, my employees. It's not very nice at times. Uh, we had someone threaten one of my appraisers. It's not been a, a pleasant experience. I understand people are upset, but they can also be um, polite and and we can learn we can be civil with each other. Um, we uh, although it's tapered, the calls have tapered down a little bit. We're kind of playing it by ear, but we've actually had appraisers from uh, integrity in our conference room for to to accept phone calls. So when it gets to be, too jammed. Like we have, you know, we have three lines coming in. Uh, we have three people that answer the lines coming in. And if they can answer those questions, they answer the questions. If they can't, they flip them to an appraiser, uh, to one of the two appraisers. And um, if to catch the overflow, we've had appraisers in the conference room as needed to, uh, from, a, from integrity so that we answer all the questions. We from those questions, often people will request a board of revision complaint form and we we are mailing those out. So we've mailed out quite a few, but what we've gotten back has not necessarily been um, indicative of how many we've mailed out. Absolutely. I just said that people are speeding up. They, I do want to reiterate, though, that if, if an appraisal, too, and I've heard that the your office is giving out a list of appraisals or suggested appraisals, appraisers, someone. Someone may, but not from my office. Um, we are not allowed to do that. We're not allowed to do that. We don't do that. So if someone has told you that, they've misinformed you. Um, the, it does, you know, yes, it does take a while to get an appraisal, um, but we, we don't give, we don't give legal information. We don't do any of that. We can't make recommendations. Um, but you can file the complaint without having the appraisal if you want. Uh, you know, you have to look at whether that, you know, you have to look at the difference in what you're paying in taxes and all of that, whether it's worth it. That's an individual's um, responsibility to decide that. Um, I We talked about the deadline, and I do want to reiterate the deadline is April 1st. And 
if someone chooses to submit after the deadline um, and we're going to give them as people that warning, it will be dismissed. We can't, we can't, we can't hear it. Um, it, it will, it will be given and, and you cannot file again for two more years. So I recommend people get these filings in if they want to, if they want to file for a complaint on the board of revision. Yeah. All right. But we, like I said, we get a lot of phone calls, but um, people don't seem to completely understand the process. We've got it out there on the, on the website um, and we try to explain it as best we can. Well, I just wanted to note for the record that, um, you know, I know that they'll be giving a quick little appraisal thing, right? I, all of my training and appraisal is formal and it's all because there was an appraiser in training, which is the same status as the chief appraiser. It's all listed on the state and I've gone to um, AI and the, the, that's the appraisal institute and the um, Pondros and continued with that training. So it would be something that I'd be interested in, but I understand that uh, I wouldn't, and, you know. We did have a discussion. <laughs> no, we didn't. It's not that. We did have a discussion yesterday at the workshop and we were notified that you did schedule a verbal appointment that you didn't show up for to contest the appraisal value and that you pulled paperwork that you were going to file paperwork to challenge it yourself. And we figured out how do you challenge it and then sit on the board yourself. So that was the only discussion we had there yesterday. Right. And you could have been there yesterday to be a part of the discussion. That would have been great. Well, um, I believe that you guys are aware of my background, but because um, that came up before when we were talking about it, uh, when I originally was um, interested in that. So, yeah, I would, I think that it's evident that no one would serve in a capacity where there would be a con conflict for the, to. For the, That's what we would have to discuss preside, publicly to, preside over to see if there would be or not. But I, I can say for the record that I, I always, I, you know, I, I don't believe in the property tax increases and I do um, hope that everyone uh, challenges to try to reduce their taxes. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with our board of commissioners, right? You know, I would hope that you would reach out to Representative Loychek and Representative. That's right. It starts at the state level. Gucci and have them change it on the state level. We'd love it. That's too, where it by came the way. from. Completely un unfair. I understand people calling upset because you know every no, they're not. People aren't getting raises uh, equivalent to the proportion of the increase in their property. Uh, taxes and it's it's um, unsettling and difficult for a lot of people. Agreed, Commissioner. I actually, agree. We all agree. We agree with that. It's, I think it starts at the state level with the too. formula, and hopefully, uh, people in Columbus see what uh, families and businesses and individuals are going through here in Trumbull County. So, okay. Anybody else have something for the good, Mr. Tejo? You want the floor? So following up on my last visit, please, please name and where you're oh, from, though, for the Jason Tedra, Hubbard Township. Uh, Mary Lou Reed or Hubbard Township. Um, Bill Kyler, Hubbard Township. And Bill is the head of the uh, Kyler Foundation, uh, the one nonprofit that we had spoke about last time. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and filled out the uh, application, uh, did a lot of review on what the allowable uh spending was and stuff like that. So we incorporated that into this request to put forth to you guys in for the total amount of the $297,000 for the initial study so we can help benefit and look at downstream mitigation for natural hazards as well as a future benefit for uh, hopefully the small businesses in our community and stuff like that. Because if we can turn this into the public property once was designated to be, we'll be able to actually kind of almost create a tourist type environment where people actually want to come to our community and positively impact a lot of the small business in Hubbard as well as Brookfield, hopefully, and we can continue to grow that. Do you, do you have any more correspondence with the landowner that he's willing to make that public or anything in writing or uh, agreement that if we do this, it, it will become public and he won't just build a million dollar mansion. No, no, great view. I am working on putting that together with uh hopefully getting together with Trust Public Lands at some point here shortly. I have a uh, meeting set up uh, that's actually going to be being scheduled with the State Attorney General's Office, uh, ODNR, the landowners, and myself. Uh, I know they had spoke one point about having some uh, county officials potentially present. I don't know if you guys would be interested in all. If you guys would, I would gladly 
put your names in the hat to say, hey, you guys can be part of it. Because I want you guys to be, like I said, this has been 100% about transparency with me across the board on everything. And I want you guys to know exactly what you're getting into. And I don't want to come up, lead you down one path and then go down another. Like I said, the owner has been 100% supportive of this. They previously were going to do this with this property to begin with anyways. Uh, they have said, put something together. I think the concern was why they put, you know, their right to reserve uh, or the right to reserve how they're going to mitigate that at the end is because if they make a, a commitment right now without a, a, a complete deal on the table, what happens if uh, a public entity comes in and says, we're going to offer you half what the property is, then there's a commitment there that they would be basically doing themselves some type of harm. So, the, yeah. Pre, the ad looks at an ad approved appraisal and then making sure that the, the agreement for the property yes. is... Um, so they're going to be the local residents are going to be starting an additional nonprofit to take some funding towards this so they can actually hire some legal counsel. So hopefully we can start getting something established. Have you guys spoke with the, the landowner actually directly or yes. just through his attorneys? Yes. No, directly to him okay. as well. Actually, it's two owners. Uh, I was originally three. I spoke to both of them as well as their attorney. I speak to him usually once, twice a week, keeping him up to speed on where what I found, stuff like that. Are they local or are they absentee? Uh, they're they're chagrin falls area so i mean they're far enough away that they're not down here all the time uh sounds like it was actually the third brother that originally did the purchase through their business and he's no longer with that group now in part because of this it sounds like but uh i'm not sure of exactly what their internal workings were but like i said they they've wanted to you know sell this property they were willing to do it before speaking with trust public lands they said they would be interested in looking at an opportunity with this again and with having potential uh, donor recipient or potential options for different recipients and stuff like that, I think the the possibility to make this something that we can make a uh, public property, uh, at least to some level, is is achievable at this point. Um, I met the folks with the a reduced coalition. Yes. Too. Yeah. So they they were behind this. They want to see something positive come to the community. I know uh, their president is actually a part of the brothers club as well. And they're starting to work with the conservation club. So the hope is, is we can find something where I know I've even talked to Zachary Savet about the other property they have right there about being able to utilize that for some of the youth stuff through the, uh, the conservation club and stuff like that, where I'm a member as well. So we can start to expand some stuff and try to get some of the kids back outside and stuff like that. So helps everybody's mental health. And I, I think it's good to learn those lessons in life. So, so if you would. So you ended up getting with the auditor's office to get the. Yes, I got the form. Uh, the last page of the form I actually filled out in a uh, word document and printed that out and included it with this. Oh, okay. Did you give a copy? Are this, these are the only copies we have. No, I have no copy. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. I know Mary Lou would like to say a few things as well. Yeah. I just want to thank the county commissioners for being available and listening and working with us in our community. Um, the people on Colberg Lake is are very committed and uh, to doing whatever they can do, we can do to um, help with preserving and saving this lake. And um, it's very difficult for a lot of the residents that live on the lake to attend these meetings um, because they are so uh, emotional over the fact of losing the lake. I'm not sure if you realize the um, what a positive experience it is to live on a lake and to be able to transport yourself very easily by walking into your backyard and into a, a surreal environment where you're, you know, breathe e easier and your your mental health is is very um, taken care of back in that lake. So we want to try to make it available for everybody in our community. And so um, it's just uh, something that uh, we want, especially for the youth, to be able to have a place where they can fish and uh, live, uh, be away from what society is these days for our kids. So 
And um, I have been the person that people have stopped and had talked about their own personal memories on the lake and what it means to them. So I just wanted to share that it's much more than, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a lot of people want that lake. So it's very important to our community. Thank you for um, listening. Appreciate it. Thank you. From a public official standpoint, I know I do have some concerns with the kind of water security because there are some low to moderately moderately income families that live on the lake and stuff like that. And we've already had one resident, once they lowered the lake, had to have a well redug. I know there's another one. There's just, uh, I think, 12 to 15 feet deep. And I know that it's going to increase the water table. And I know you understand because I believe you live on Mosquito Lake, so you understand the kind of the benefit in living next to a property like that where you actually can get a little solace when you get outside and sure. stuff like that. So we understand, you know, my, yeah. my big thing though is I, there's a lot of lakes in the County. Yes. There's a thousand lakes in Trumbull County. There's less than what there used to be. Well, but there are a lot of privately owned lakes yes. and a lot of privately owned dams. Yes. And we opened the door to say, well, it, there are people that did recreate it. They fished it. They hunted it. That was under old owners. Yes. The new owners, you know, you have to have written permission to fish there. You have to have written permission to hunt there. I haven't met anybody yet that has that. Yeah. And, and I've talked to sportsman's clubs. These owners do not let the guys from the sportsman's club hunt the lake or fish it. I don't uh, believe they've asked. They, well, have they, they have in the past. They've reached out in the past to try to do joint fishing tournaments on Hubbard right. Conservation Club. And they they haven't been, been granted access to utilize the property. Yeah. So for us to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars, for like I said, and just yeah. and I'm, no, I'm no, a late yeah. guy. I'm a natural resources yeah. guy. No. Green natural resources. I, I, um, we just want to make sure that we don't do this. Yeah. And there's a guarantee that the landowner doesn't get a two million dollar offer from someone to build a beautiful house. Yeah. With a lake view, and then tells everybody, "Thank you for fixing the dam, but get off my property." Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. Something written in. Too. That's what we need. That's all I'm stating. It, it, and if you want to, if you want to grant something based on a contingency that if we don't get that, we give the money back. I, I, I'm completely open to that. You want to set a bar that I have to achieve. I have no problem jumping and doing something for my community as well as you know the landowners and my friends. I, I, get, I, I and I just like I said, there are sportsmen's clubs in the county. Three of them that just repaired their lakes. Yeah. And I and we don't we got to be careful too as we do this. We don't open it up where they say, well, why'd you pay to fix that lake? But we just spent our members' money to fix our dam you know why why did you fix that dam for them or did why did ask, you do the study on that dam did they ask well <laughs> they have not but if they did ask but that's open up pandora's yeah. box no, no, to I, no, I, I completely understand like i said and that's why the goal is is to make this something public this is something that the federal government's even allowing for this to be used for this type of property number one but like i said the goal is and it's not i don't think it's far-fetched they were previously you had a deal that they were going to end up making this a metro park that may be difficult for the metro parks so we're even like i said continuing to explore other options so yeah uh, there could also be some uh the, the road yes so i uh I've been hoping hoping to set up a conversation with ODOT because right now, because the lake uh, valve isn't wasn't completely operating properly, where when they go to drain the lake, it doesn't stop at the overflow. So it's actually operated at full pool. So the state is actually doing studies and looking to redo the off ramp on 80 uh, because of the flooding that goes downstream, because any amount of water that comes into that lake immediately goes out. If we can get it below the spillway, we can actually do a retention with that which would actually prevent the state from spending a lot of money. Plus, if we can prevent any kind of flooding at that off-ramp in the future and stuff like that, then we don't have negative effects towards uh, our, our people being able to get to our businesses in town and stuff like that, and people being able to get home. I um, did speak to someone from ODOT yesterday about that. Right. So they're going to find out if it, really, if it yeah. relates, and they're going to talk directly to the people who yeah. are looking into that yeah. particular and I, and I commend you on what you're doing. The, the awareness is the big factor right oh, now, 100%. especially with the landowners. If he sees the communities rallying behind this, that's going to tear their heartstrings a little more. They're going to look at their investment and maybe I mean, hopefully guys, like work into a, a deal better. With them so you guys can understand where they're at. I'd gladly be able to you know try to mitigate that for you and work in, work in the middle. Figure out anything. Like I said, they, 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 they speak to me on a regular basis. Like, like I said, they've offered all the engineering that they've already previously done to kind of mitigate any costs associated with anything in the future. They're willing to take whatever money they had planned that they were going to have to spend to do any kind of breach.
put that towards this from a verbal commitment to me, as well as potentially additional money if we can work to work together and find something out. I've always been the type of person, whether it's at work or home or wherever, everything's got to be a two-way street and everybody's got to kind of help each other out. And they've been willing to do that. And I've been up front with them and they've absolutely reciprocated that to this point. Okay. Thank you for every, everything that you're doing. We're still, I thought that we were going to get something relatively quick. We, did we ask the prosecutor's office to find out about if they could. We did ask and we're, we're still waiting for the opinion back from Bill regarding the legality of us doing something like this. I appreciate you guys taking the time. I we have received a request relative to Colberg Lake. At our meeting, we sure In our meeting last week, we did ask. You hadn't had an official request that you could probably review. Yeah, it I, don't, well I don't believe the, the discussion was about the Warren Township, Levittsburg Dam. The discussion wasn't about Colberg was Lake. The week that he was here, we did ask. I believe so, too. No, I, I but, don't. I don't believe you ever did I, I i don't recall ever having a written or verbal request not written. it was no, I, I don't. it was verbal because we said that we were on no uncertain terms we would make sure that we were allowed to spend money because there were a lot of people concerned that we would be spending uh, th this is an art project and bill wouldn't be advising us on that yeah this is the arpa grant what you asked about bill to check on right before you, before we ever considered it as an ARPA, you guys were looking at this as an ARPA. You asked Mr. Tedro to to reach out to me and do that. I still haven't got. I need the copy of it. Yep, I you. have an extra and, copy. And I can, I yeah. Go back and look at the minutes. Oh, Bill, we we will. We well, the bottom line is the bottom line is if this is being submitted as an ARPA project, you then we have that, Tanya. It wouldn't be through our office anyway, but. I, I like I said, the, the, there was never a request relative to Colbert. Well, Lake. we made this one a priority that week too. Well, and and that's I think what I need to ask you is what you want me to do now that I have an application. Well, they Submit actually to Tanya. we have to but because sorry. they actually have a a deadline coming up too, so that would be perfect. Well, can I? I had some questions, ARPA questions, anyway. So I'll, if we can kind of move into that really quick, I'll just, my, I have other stuff too, but the ARPA stuff, um, I gave to you a, um, update yesterday. I sent it via email. I also left, uh, copies of that and I'll, if you want this to be a priority, once I receive it, it can go straight to Tanya or to attorney Rogers, but there are other things. Thank you. Um, uh, what I will do with this right now, regardless of what you ask me to do to, to this moment, is I will uh, scan it. It will go in on the commissioner's drive so that there's a digital copy in order to be forwarded to, to Attorney Rogers. If you wish it to be a priority, I will send it next. But that means it goes on to the yes sheet. The, the amount goes on to the yes sheet. So I'm getting a, I'm getting nods. But yes. That's what I want from all three of you. Yes. Okay. A Same thing with Township. No, Warren Township yeah, is you were you did not you did not have it as ARPA. You were going to find out if we could if we could spend the money directly from the commissioners. That's what you would ask Mr. Attorney Danzo. I understand it's confusing. There's a lot there, but that's what you would ask. Circumstances are different yes, too with I both dams and right. yeah, how I they're owned. It. And I get it. Just totally different. Um, I also did want to point out that you guys do have the letter back as well. So. The Warren Township letter is back in your possession as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, did, when was that sent, Bill? Uh, yesterday. Okay. All right. I have a folder of opinions. You're saying that's your prosecutor. It's a new prosecutor's opinion that's not in here. I don't know where it is in, okay. in your paperwork, but okay. I do know that it was sent to all three of you by email. Yeah. It was sent yesterday afternoon. This is my well, okay. prosecutor's opinions. I thought maybe it was in there. Thank you, Bill. All right. Again, since we're on ARPA, I'm going to go ahead with that if that's all right. Um, I gave you an updated uh, uh, an update yesterday. I both emailed it and printed. I have some questions with how to proceed with the other things that are on the list. Uh, first of all, Attorney Rogers Rogers currently has six requests in her possession to consider. Three, according to her last correspondence with her, are close to being done, should be done by the end of the week. I just want to 
let you guys know too, I'm out of the office next week. So I will I will be in contact with my office and on VPN. So I will send, you guys get those opinions, but I won't do a full update until I return to the office the following week. Um, so you are almost done. All right. I didn't bring that up. Can I grab a... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, it was in the update that I sent oh, okay. you yesterday. All right. Uh, but there's three that where she's had some trouble getting answers from the um, the requesters. Um, so Bristol Township Park, Warren Civic Music, Family and Community Services, Valley Counseling. She's awaiting some responses to questions. For the Levittsburg Train Station Gallery, Brookfield Stormwater Project, and the Western Reserve Port Authority, she's received responses to the questions and plans to have letters for you this week. Um, so... The next request, aside from the culvert, which we will put a, put ahead of those, on the next request that we have are McDonald Fire Department, and then and that's just PP and emergency uh, response radio equipment, which I think is probably going to be a fairly easy one for her since she's had some similar to that in the past. Um, next after that is the Champion Township Fire Department, which is um, the ambulance one. Now we have um, on the yes sheet currently three or more ambulance requests. Johnson, which is eight in line, Braceville, which is 28 in line, and Bazetta, which is 29. There's also the request from Gerard that's on the maybe list. So my question for you, because all of these are related, particularly the ones on the yes list, would you like me to submit them all together instead of waiting? Yeah. All right. I would. All right. I don't want to send Gerard. Okay, well that was that wasn't the question. Right, yeah. The question was the ones that are on the yes list. Do you want those all submitted together? Gerard is currently on the maybe list. I'm fine with leaving that there and you guys reconsidering it later and knowing. We need to start moving on these. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and that I was, know you know that. That was a way that I felt we could move through and get some done very quickly. It would be easier for her. So just to clarify, what I will be sending next or having uh, Mr. Misaki send over to her will be, and I have one more question after this, but will be the McDonald Fire, the Colburn Theater, the McDonald Fire Department, the Champion Township Fire Department, along with the other three ambulance requests. All right, one more question for you. And this has kind of been sitting around for a little while. Um, Mesopotamia did rewrite their request. I have that. It's in the commissioner drive as well. Where do you want me to put that on the list? Wherever they were in the queue before. Right. So technically they would be in the queue ahead of these other requests. Do you want me to just, well, just save them and put them after this? them after this that's after fine. this round after this round. that's my opinion okay is everybody in agreement with that all right okay so, just just for the record too for all the townships and all the people that submitted um speaking on behalf of the three of us up here we worked awful hard last fall to rate these applications to try to get the checks out as quick as we can there's been a holdup, but it has not been us. We submitted things to the attorney. We are in the process of submitting a lot of things. It's been weeks since we've gotten approval from the attorney. There's been sickness. There's been vacations. There's been other things on their end. We are dealing with that. We are working with that. And we have, I believe, through Martha and Mr. Masaki, kind of reached out to them to put a flame under them a little bit and say, hey, our citizens are waiting for these checks. You've got to speed things up. So. Uh -huh. I would I would make a suggestion that perhaps the um, commissioners might want to send a letter to the law firm. Um, we got one of the things that I noted a few weeks ago is in the letter of engagement from the law firm from back in 22, we were supposed to get monthly billings. We're not getting those we're having to ask for them. And we requested, we hadn't gotten a billing since October. And then we just, we request, had, we had Cheryl request one that was at the commissioner's meeting. We asked Cheryl to request one, she requested one. In the time period from October 17th to I think February 7th or 8th, we had less than 50 hours that were spent on our projects. I, I do. And we were supposed to get an attorney and a paralegal to do it. 
monthly invoices. That's the problem. So right. I think both of those things need to be addressed in some way. And as I've reminded you outside of this meeting, I am not the person, it is not my office that has engaged this attorney. It is your office. I can do what I can to try to speed things up. Mr. Masaki can do what he can. They need to hear from you guys, not from us. At this point, I mean, even if another attorney was willing to work with uh, her on there, I mean, at this point, I know it's going to incur more costs, but I mean, if we can get through these, that's, we need to start right. doing and, that. And, and, Exactly. We need to spend that time and get it done. And I, I just, you know, that's my, my suggestion is perhaps one of you draw up a letter and with these concerns and the three of you sign it and send it out to them and try to do that. Um, that's all I had on ARPA, but since I'm up here anyway, I have a couple other things. Um, yesterday, Christy Sesteric, my senior accountant, did review a budget overview with you. Um, she sent a detailed recommended um, general fund budget to you yesterday. Um, and it's, it, it had all the details. The question about EMA that was raised at the thing was resolved in that. Um, the other fund budgets will be completed today. Um, and they will be sent to you. Um, we will have a printed copy of everything available for Commissioner Frenchko, and it will be sent up by the end of the day. Do any of the other two of you want a printed copy as well? Yeah. All right. I'd like to see the difference between the request and what you're proposing as a budget as well. Um, I can have Christy prepare that for you. Then it would show what, I think it already did show what we spent last year. Yes. How much I mean, we have yes. that from the budget hearings, but if you yes. can redo that. Um, so Christy will be, at, as I mentioned, I will be out of my office next week. Christy will be, um, at Tuesday's meeting to answer any questions. Although I am out of the office, I do plan on being um, on the Zoom for Tuesday's meeting. Um, one other thing, um, I have had just about my office itself and just because I want to get it out there, there's been a lot of chatter about where the extra money that is collected this year um, we've talked about the values going up and taxes going up. And I've tried to explain a little bit when I've been out up here about the inside millage and that's what it gets increased and also the 20 mil floor. And so what we've done, because we know that people want to know exactly which entities are getting what, we've put that on our page as a link and it's called the, it's on the actual uh, Homepage, there's a link as you go down about accessibility and transparently uh, transparency to the local government impact page. And what you can do on that page is you it's a, a drop down menu. I have it separated between school districts and other entities. And what you will see uh, when you like if you wanted to do Holland, for example, school district, you jump down, you put Holland, it comes up what Holland got last year, what Holland get, is getting will be getting this year and the difference between. So how much more money each school district is getting and how much more money each entity is getting. Within, with the townships in particular, and also I believe the municipalities, it also brings up any, like if they have levies that are over, like so there's, you know, they get a certain amount of the inside millage for their general fund. And that's often divided between, and they decide that division, right? So it may go into their general, it may go into their general fund, but they may also designate it for something like roads or things like that. So those are up, they're identified in that way. So that people can see the differences between uh, last year and this year, so they know exactly how much money, more money each entity is getting, in including the county. So it's there for people now. Um, there had been, I had seen a few th uh, things on social media where we were withholding it or whatever. It was just trying to get it assembled in a understandable and easy to access way. And I want to thank Chrislyn Smith or Chrislyn Fercana from my office for, from IT for setting that up in such an easy way. It's really, it's a really good thing. And so people can utilize that. Thank you. Um, then an another thing that, uh, that was discussed last yesterday, um, boards are separate entities. So if, it's, if a board of Trumbull County, uh, in Trumbull County, they they do their own budgets, they do things their own way. And I heard about the difficulty and I just want to make sure that the HR director is aware that we don't we don't tell 
you know, Children's Services Board or any other boards, Veterans Commission, you know, things like that. We don't necessarily tell them historically what they do with their budgets. So. No, that was never. Well, it talks about how they're spending with their um, conversion. She's talking about contract negotiations. Talking about board of elections, which legacy we, costs that we've tried to eliminate throughout the county, and and hopefully they're following suit. That's all. Which we, I don't believe that the board of commissioners is able to impose. We're not imposing. Okay. We're just letting them know the changes that have been made in the county. Been made in the county. Okay. And, we, and with that said, uh, we got a letter from Judge Frederica in regards to some of the statements made last week. And he wanted to reiterate to the public and to us that as probate judge, his statutory duties related to the Metro Parks Board, he appoints the board and he can remove board commissioners for cause. He doesn't tell them what to do. They're an autonomous body. He doesn't give them direction on policies and procedures. He doesn't advise them uh, on removing a dam or not removing a dam. So he he there were some comments made. He said that he didn't like last week that challenged his involvement. And he said he tries to find the best uh, candidates when a board seat comes up. And he said, now we have an engineer, a water specialist, an attorney, and two community members. And he said he appoints them, and then he backs off. He has no involvement with what they do after that. He does hear the complaints. He does hear the issues that are going on with the Metro Parks Board in regards to um, Warren Township. And he said he, you know, he feels for the citizens there, but he, if there was just cause to remove a board member, he would. I had a conversation with him on the phone, and and he uh, – this well, there's a letter, too. He followed up with a letter. But he said that he uh, – he would remove a board member if there was just cause, but as of the appointment, he tries to be fair in it. So to just give him his due, because he did uh, was brought up in last week's meeting regarding the board. Um, I'd like to respond to that letter. Probably. Sure. Um, so th this. Th we are talking about a distinguished judge in the county, so please be cautious with that, because he was offended by some of the comments last week. Uh, so. The reality is, is as a, as an appointing authority, if you as a board of commissioners or as the judge who is uh, the person who is solely responsible for appointing members of the park commission, Metro Park Commission, uh, what he has been doing is not advertising, but rubber stamping the same applicants. And there has been no formal adver advertisement or interview process to rank them. Uh, one of the things that I suggested because I did send a response, uh, I sent a response letter back, and one, if I would have known this was going to be read, I would have printed it and read that too. Uh, there's no effort to interview the applicants to see if they're being responsive to the community, and for the last two years or two and a half years, they've been completely unresponsive. The existing board or commission members for the Parks Board uh, have been non-responsive. The other thing that he can do when he interviews them, he can ask them, hey, do you support increasing our property taxes with the new levy? That judge does not even interview anyone. He just continues to appoint people who are pro increasing the property tax for the Metro Parks Board and doesn't and then pretends like he has nothing to do with it. He is appointing every single person on that Metro Parks Board. And, and to my knowledge, there's no formal application process where he's interviewing them, finding out what their new ideas are in order to advance the Metro Parks re and not have to renew property taxes. I'm sorry, in increase property taxes for an organization that never has had them. How they would be more responsive to the community's needs. There's, there's nothing. There's just continuing to put the same people back on. Um, also, the plan that they have, if they were to incre if they were to pass the property tax increase, the plan consisted of keeping the same employee there and raising his salary by like three or four times to pr to have a not to go out to. Uh, advertise for a new park director now that they would have a 
a, a larger budget, but to just give this guy a, a raise three or four times what he's already making. None of that is is what I believe that the public uh, in the public's best interest. But the judge continues to appoint people without interviewing them on what they uh, what their opinions are to make sure that it aligns with the community. I mean, how many times has the tax been on the ballot and pe people pe keep voting no on it, but he keeps on appointing people whose only solution is to raise taxes. So, I mean, I believe that he should actually do an interviewing process, have an application, ask questions and give the public a record as to how they're being appointed and why they were selected as opposed to just reappointing the same people. So. You know, uh we don't know that. I don't know what process he uses. I don't think any in this room does. There may be an application process. We don't know that. So to say there's no application process, that he just indiscriminately appoints people and doesn't know their views. This is a gentleman who is very, very big on the environment and natural resources. He's one of the leading guys when he came to Mosquito Lake, uh, dealing with the hydrilla and dealing with the issues on Mosquito Lake, where he's volunteered outside of his capacity as judge because he does boat, he does fish, he does enjoy the outdoors. Well, that's what I'm saying. He probably should now because he is being under Dutch Frederick on the phone with these comments that you have. And I don't believe these comments are all fair and true. And I don't think they should be said from the bench up here uh, because I don't believe they're true. I don't believe this judge indiscriminately just appoints people and reappoints them without interviewing, without knowing anything about them. That is a, a wild statement. I think that you're, that you're lobbying out there. And I don't think that's fair. That's not what I said. What I said that he continued that, there should be an interview process. How do we know there is? We don't know there isn't. Okay. We're making assumptions, and that's dangerous. And judge is more than welcome yeah. to call in, yes, and we'll put them right up. How do we know? Wants, How do we know there I really isn't? don't want to uh, go out and attack a public official at, at this For point right now. May not know. Who's not here to defend himself because of speculation and what we think? Because are high enough. Um, really, they just, it has nothing to do with the probate court really, judge. Yes, it does because he's appointing people. Uh, he's appointing a board that autonomously does tries to put a levy on appointing and reappointing the same people we speak we speak policy through our appointees and when we continue to appoint the same people who are trying to in, in, or they him okay. when when any entity continues to reappoint the same people who try to increase property taxes they're speaking that that's what they support so i believe that that needs to be reevaluated and that we need to get um different i think they need to be looking at um changing the parks board up a little bit has anybody written to the judge to complain about a park board member that you know of that should be removed or not reappointed again we can i just say one thing we just got into it with alex telling you said you can't tell another elected official or another board how to govern their 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 duties and how to uh carry out their duties now you're telling him how to carry out his duties and he's an elected fully elected judge so which is it it's totally different but you it, it is it's the same thing it's not you, you it's an administrative you function of the judge understand. and you're telling him how to run really that understand. okay there's commissioners i would just like clarification especially because you'd like to continue to bring up my name so much um with that being said alexandra divinjanzi bush human resources director is it not marching orders from the board of commissioners to attempt to reduce conversion to 80 40 yes or no yes thank you so you are shaming me for just simply trying to do my job and my job correctly that's all i would like to say thank you commissioners and trying to save this county money thank, thank you, you. I think she's absolutely right with that too. We want to get toward 80 40 more. And there are some boards that don't do that that may need a little prodding or recommendation that they comply with what the rest of the county is doing. What's, what's wrong with that? Asking is fine, but it sounded like you were confused and you were seeking a prosecutor's opinion over something that should be. I, no, we weren't. You, okay. you, you must have missed that part of the meeting. You should have been there in person because that Just was come to the discussed. meeting and then that you can ask these questions. Oh. Instead of doing it during the during the business that should be conducted, maybe it's, it's skipped at that point. You didn't now, hear that part. Unfortunately, skipped. could have skipped at that point. Okay. Every time I come up here, I have to take a breath. That's okay. So, uh, uh, I have some notes. I'm not going to read like I did last time, but 
I do want to thank the commissioners for coming out to Warren Township administration to the meeting the other last week. And uh, I, I am sorry that things are happening with Judge Frederica that, you know, his name was soiled or whatever. I don't believe that Warren Township Board of Trustees did any of that. So I uh, just want to want that on, on the record. So uh, I attended last week's Metro Parks meeting the day after we had the meeting at the township. And it actually did not go very well. And uh, so there was four or five other residents from one township that attended. And I went in and I know that John Brown was at our meeting. And I do believe, and you were there, that John Brown was treated pretty well, considering the animosity that people have about the dam removal. And we thanked him for coming. And I did not get the same treatment when I went to the Metro Parks, but it, it doesn't matter to me how they treat me. I really don't care, but I think it's very disrespectful to Warren Township residents, the things that were said at that meeting. And it's all on the record. So uh, I don't know where we are with everything right now. I know you made a suggestion that on the 21st to have a meeting I was under the impression that you as commissioners wanted to run that meeting. Was I wrong or? I, I did make that recommendation and, and I, I have to echo your sentiments there. You went to the meeting. I heard the meeting, how the meeting went. And then the park board, I believe, and we just talked about this thing. Okay. The judge appoints the park board, but I do believe the park board we have now is not receptive to the citizens of Trumbull County. I'll make that statement publicly. I don't believe that they are in tune with what is going on in Warren Township or the citizens or the complaints we're getting here at the Board of Commissioners. I think they have a deaf ear and they've already got their mindset on something they want and they're doubling down. And with proof of that is Mr. Fabrizio has sent us two emails in the last week basically stating that, that we're doing this Here's some other studies to read. You're not informed enough. You're listening to those people in Warren Township, and here's what we're going to do and jump on board. I don't appreciate that as a commissioner. Uh, we do oversee their budget. I did bring that up yesterday, and there's only so many things we can do with a board that doesn't want to be receptive to its citizens, and the only recourse we have here is to control the purse strings of what they can and can't do financially. They can make all the decisions they want as an autonomous board, but they can't do it without money that comes from the commissioners. I did attend that meeting and they, it was, we saw John Brown snap at that, that public meeting that you facilitated and say, he's not going to say anything until the next day. And he just had the others there be his mouthpiece. I asked a very important question that I thought needed to be answered. And that is, are you going to consider our study, if we, if, if the study that the commissioners fund is going to show an alternative that is a solution that would be more uh, aligned with what the community wants, would you pass that on to the engineers who are currently doing the design build? And his response, his response was that it is their decision. It is up to them. Oh, we'll forward the study on. But they're saying that they're not they're not committed to uh, applying or implementing any of the alternatives. And it was a very obvious. They, I mean, the way they were talking, I didn't like the way they were talking to the trustee. I actually had to get up and, and answer a question because Mr. Brown was grilling her over who does acting like there is something something uh, nefarious about how the the engineer was <laughs> selected, and it was only because of his prowess and expertise in, in dam and dam, you know. So it it was not I, I I agree with with that. And this is why I say what I say. You know, I believe that our the appointing authority should consider the fact that the if the commissioners of the park board are not responsive to the community and they are going to go full speed ahead with the plan that completely ignores the will of the people in the township to whom it's affecting, as well as the adverse impact on the township road and that cost, I, I think that he that does uh, should cause him to consider um, 
their positions as park commissioners. And we need to make that point though to him. I mean, he's we're getting the cart before the horse. You know, it yeah. we are addressing this publicly here, but I don't know that any of us have addressed this directly with the judge that hey, your honor, we got some rogue board members that don't care about the public clearly. They're not listening, they're not playing well, they're not working with the commissioners, they're doing their own thing. We may want to consider it. I mean, okay. I'd be happy to provide the, and, and that's fine. What the last meeting was, we, you, you did say we need to go down there and protest. People need to go to his office and protest. It, it is, that's a little early, a little premature I mean, for that. So we give him a chance. That, but I am saying that there's a lot of people giving us heat, somehow believing that the board of commissioners are associated with those appointments. We have absolutely nothing to do with it. So since he is the appoint, appointing authority, he's now trying to um, backpedal a little bit. And say something a little more palatable to, to um, hey, you know, we just, I just appoint them and I have nothing to do with it. Well, appointing them is a huge responsibility. And if they're not responsive, then we need to make sure, or he, in my opinion, should be making sure that he's putting people there who are responsive to the communities. Well, so. I, uh, the first question that one of the board members asked me was, why did we wait so long? You know, because they're at a certain stage. And I don't know what planet they live on, but I think everybody in Trumbull County knows that Warren Township has been against this from the from the get go. So we're not looking for a battle. We're looking for a way that we can all work together. I walked out of there. I did not feel that they're going to work with us at all because John Brown and Randy Fabrizio both stated that they had control and they were going to do what they wanted to do. I was going to add that the Dark Angelo woman, Nicolette, um, she was, um, she said that the reason that she didn't come to the meeting last year was because it was a sunshine violation. Now, if it was just for them to, inform informationally, for them to come and hear the concerns of the citizens, they could have gone there and listened to the complaints mm -hmm. of the citizens and not said anything, but then brought them back to their board meeting yeah. or sent one sole person. They didn't even send their director. So I, I was disappointed by, by, by that, by them. It, it, it looked like gaslighting to me. Yeah. And then the other, uh, it, I didn't, I didn't like it. <laughs> and I, I hate this too, because I'm we, was there by myself I got to, we so need a park them. board. We got some great things they've done. We've got the bike trail. We've got the areas in the area that are all, they're public hunting. A lot of them there, there are, they've expanded their base in the County and the footprint and on a shoestring budget with a shoestring staff, they have made accomplishments. But at this point now, I don't understand why, If they, especially when they want taxpayers to give them money in levies. I don't know if it's if they're pissed off still that they got shot down for their ridiculous levy ask. Or, they were opposing it. They were opposing. Everybody was opposing it. <laughs> they were. So it might be a little tit for tat thing going on. In addition to that. Um, John Brown was at that meeting at your at your location where uh, Migliozzi said something publicly about his concerns. But yet at their park board meeting, uh, Nicolette said, um, I'm sorry, we don't believe you unless it's in writing. And John Brown could have at that point said, oh, no, I was there last night. This was mm -hmm. this was said. I was actually there and heard him. But he didn't. I, I, you can clearly see their agenda and it's well, i don't know what notes he was taking i took notes too and i tried to present those to metro parks when i attended their meeting we had a trauma county engineer randy smith say he's kind of concerned for the roads we got trauma county sanitary with gary newbrow they said he was concerned if they would take that out before the sewer lines we also had uh frank Migliosi that made a statement and those are three county officials that are held in high esteem by pretty much everybody. And I would hope the park board would respect those yes. opinions. But they wouldn't listen. They they, they just said no. That the day before. Yeah. And they want this in writing from the they want this in writing from the um health department. Uh, anyway, so uh last week I asked and about thirty thousand for the study. And I think you were going to check to see if you could do that. So I just, I wonder where we are with, with that. Well, apparently we have the opinion that came yesterday and I, I, I apologize. I didn't a copy of it. Or can you explain the opinion while you're here, please? Well, essentially that you're conflicted. Uh, privilege. If anyone else. Okay. 
discuss. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. I'll second that. I'm waiving privilege. Sure. Um, well, in that case, yeah, the uh, the opinion from our office is that we did look into this. We spent quite a bit of time looking into to see what we could do. We have come to the conclusion that we do have a conflict. There's a there's an opinion from the Ohio uh, Board of Commissioners on Grievances and Discipline that talks about our ability to represent multiple clients, even through disagreements. But then there's another there's they go on to say when it becomes antagonistic, when the relationship becomes contentious, then we cannot represent. <laughs> this is this has become contentious. Yeah. Uh, there's no question. And and the fact of the matter is, it's not contentious just between Metro Parks and the Board of Commissioners. Warren Township is involved. It's clearly contentious with the probate judge. We've got four clients now involved in this matter. And and there's a lot of unhappiness, disagreement, contention. There's just not a way that we can continue representation. So I've given you the information on how to proceed from here, some safe yeah. language on how to proceed, and you guys are are welcome to you know to move forward. Thank you. So I guess the answer would be no. Well, no, I know I'm not saying no. the answer is no. There, I'm. I'm, I'm going to uh, make a motion. I'm going to make a motion to authorize the Board of County Commissioners to join with Trumbull County Prosecuting Attorney to file an application with the Court of Common Pleas for the appointment of attorney Tom Wilson as legal counsel for the Trumbull County Board of Commissioners and Trumbull County Engineer, et cetera, uh, to provide legal research, advice, and consulting, and to handle any related litigation relating to the proposed removal of a dam in Warren Township, Trumbull County, Ohio. Uh, special note, the Trumbull County Prosecutor's, Prosecutor's Office uh, faces a conflict of interest because we cannot represent multiple parties involved in this matter. I, I I will second that. I believe that we need to have a cost though, um, but the cost, I can't remember what is our is for going rate of attorney been, Wilson. We've already been using him for something yes. else. So I don't know what that amount is. If we knew that I could put that in there. The only, the only other thing just to, just to let you know before you guys vote and everything on that is the reason that language sample language said engineer, et cetera, was Really, because I, right. I'm not sure whether whether the county engineer has already spoken with you guys and would agree to joint representation. I, it's our I hope would that, think. It's our hope that you know everybody in the county would sure. agree to that. He has concerns about the roads. Sure, so I think uh, and it's I understand. Most appropriate understand. to include him, so he doesn't. It'd be efficient, so he doesn't have to obtain. I, I have no problem with that. I just I suggest that you know maybe you guys want to make sure with him too. Would you know, be, are we okay without the dollar amount right now? It's. If you want to do what you just okay. suggested, can we say at the amount retained for the previous? Yeah, okay. and, if, and if that needs amended, we can amend it. The uh, the amount that he's currently. I will I will forward the language to you after as well. And then we so, seconded it, modified it to include the amount that he's currently. At the current rate. Right, and then we can call the call the question. Mr. Cancela Mesa. Yes. Ms. Frenchka? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. And and I will ask to fast track that too, uh, to get Mr. Wilson on this right away, right. because we understand there's a timeliness of it. And, and, and again, and, the, and there's money committed from the from the engineer's office as well yeah. for ten thousand for the for the study. So yes, that was ten thousand. We have. So I think it would it would be a wise choice for all of us to have the same uh, attorney, or else we're spending legal fees on different things so what what's the point let's all retain mr wilson and, and go that way we appreciate it very much yep, we got it and uh so the meeting on the 21st well so that's I, something too thing that i talked about as i was leaving the metro parks meeting i explained to them that they, that if they were going to meet with us jointly since since their next regular meeting is after the 21st they would have to make a motion in their board meeting to say hey we are going to have an uh, a special meeting on this date at this location at this time and i encouraged them to do that and they said uh no they're going to talk to their legal counsel for mm -hmm. Um, all right. So, well, commissioners, do we want to set a special meeting, urge them to be there, mandate that Zach is there and see if they show up or not? Or do we I want to do that? I, I think it would be a waste of time. I think that in order to do something, we should, we should do it jointly. I believe that you, you can do, we could both file joint public meetings for the same date and location, but now that we know they can't do that legally, um, until they meet at the next meeting we should just encourage them to, we should send a request asking them to put on a joint public meeting and, and let them tell us 
you know, make it, give them a few date and time options, but I would like to and let them discuss it at their public meeting first. Yeah, next, it would be we. OK, so we can't for, for a public body. There's the regular meetings, special meetings, emergency reading, meetings, the the regular meetings. If we're going to have a special meeting. We have to announce it at a regular meeting. And the only time we can't we don't have to would be at a would be an emergency meeting. So we could put that on any week and say, hey, we're going to have a special meeting. It's this place, this date, this time covering this topic. But they would have to do the same thing and they don't meet again at their regular meeting for another month. So that's why I was trying to get them to actually do that last week, but they didn't. Right, what I'm meeting. saying is, so are we waiting them for them, them to have their next regular meeting I would to like entertain to, our request. I'd like to do that. I would I would like us to as a board of commissioners if you agree to send a request to them and say we would like at your next uh meeting that you would an, a, announce a special meeting to meet jointly with uh the board of commissioners at such and such a you know and then we can get, we can give them options of days. And if they decline then we go on and do our own thing without them and consider them a hostile board and and do what we need to do. Good. Well, we, we've kind of already got the word out that there was going to be a meeting on the 21st because when you were at our meeting, we discussed it. And but they can't, they're, I don't want to give, but they're them not going to meet till the 28th. I, exactly. They're, try, what they're trying to do is make it, is, you know, it's play, a kind play problem. game. Why not just set your special meeting at their location day of their next meeting and say, hey, we're going to be there? I don't, I don't see any point yeah, actually. Yeah, Cause it's like the size of a, it's a good idea, but it, right. they're, 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 it's there, they're off 12 to 14 people max in the room. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'd have to... I, I don't believe after the meeting that I attended their meeting last week, that they, they will actually come to any meeting, no matter whether you have it. I know they won't come if Warren Township has it. So I know our residents appreciated the fact you were there, and I just like to see everything stay on track the way we left that meeting. I, if, I, I don't want to see this thing get any uglier. No, but there is a big possibility that it has to get really ugly before it gets They're, nice. They are on. Uh, they have one track, one plan, one vision, and they are absolutely not going to, from what I can tell, consider. The wishes of the township i believe that they already have that i mean it was started preliminarily through eastgate and this is this is what they're planning to do and they're just trying to push us to just get on board and ignore you guys also and i don't want to do that i know there was comments made to me in relation to they want to see what they did down in lowville duplicated over there and it doesn't really matter what anybody says so. yeah they're on a they're on a fast track and they've already done started and with the design build process the only way it could be changed is by the board looking us giving the board the study that we're trying to do and then forward it, them saying hey we agree with this let's modify it you think they're going to do that i i kind of doubt it but i actually there was a gentleman that uh was at that meeting from uh, friends of mahoning river he actually got up and he asked if they would be willing to look at alternatives and they they just said no they just shut them down the way they did everything but i'm not here to whine about it like i said i don't care who tells me they don't want to hear what i have to say because i hear it all the time but the disrespect that they're showing our residents and actually you as a commissioners by not wanting to meet because they have a one-track mind is just I've never seen anything like when this. When the people speak as loudly as they did in that meeting and with your signatures, and the only people that I had speak on the other side are two kayakers that live outside the county. Yes. That speaks wonders to me that we need to listen to our citizens and our park board needs to listen to our citizens. And they and were at that meeting, and they were also at Metro Parks meeting, the, the same gentleman. We do a meeting, too. We could also do um, – we could – if they don't want to do one jointly, we can do one and then very explicitly um, request that the director and however many, how many members are there? 
five and two of the members come so that it's not a a quorum you know we could we can still try to encourage them because they keep on pulling out excuses why, why they don't show up and well, they said well it's a sunshine law so let's either do it publicly where it's a joint meeting where it's properly noticed or we'll just invite the director and uh two members so that they can not violate that so that they don't keep regurgitating the same excuses for ignoring everyone anyway i want to thank you for working as hard as you did for the thirty thousand, and uh appreciate that and we'll see what the study shows so thank you thank you it's not over till it's over okay yeah, I've heard that. Debbie Roth, uh, Warren Township. Um, so with the dam issue, and uh, with all due respect to Judge Frederica, um, although the only control he has is removal, according to Ohio Revised Code 1545.06, he can remove those board, those board members of the, of the Metro Park, either by complaint or by of his own. Uh, well, you know, as a resident of the county, I would think that our elected officials are always first of all looking out for the best interests of the citizens of this county. Um, so I would have assumed that he would have taken some kind of action with the publicity that's been. I don't know that anybody doesn't know what's happening. Can but you ask, your organization, because your you your organization represents a lot of people, um, have you sent in a complaint? We are going to petition the probate court under 1545.06. Saying he hasn't done anything, but none of us have stepped forward to ask him to do it. He's a good man, and I think he will listen when we have the complaints. But we got to do our part to bring the complaints to him. We can't expect that he's just listening to meetings and going to act to to make us happy. I mean, that's not. Nonetheless, we're going to file the complaint under the 1545.06 uh, for the irresponsibility that the park or has demonstrated, um, you know, making statements in public meetings that they don't care if the road caves in, it's not their problem, it's the county's. I take real serious issue to that, um, as I would believe that the other county officials should take. Um, they have uh, not had any concern for the community whatsoever. Um, the disrespect that was shown in that last meeting. I mean, the park commissioners are there to, um, protect, maintain, acquire um, a park system for us. And they have basically no plans to maintain what they have. Our bike trail is, is, is in desperate need of repair. They didn't do anything at, at Canoe City with leaves or anything else. Um, the place is a mess. So they're not even maintaining the basic things, but then to go as far as to um, – the statements they made at their last meeting is ridiculous up to and including that they will not attend any meeting, whether it's run by the commissioners or anybody else, unless they it's their meeting and they're going to control it. Um, ironically enough, some people, folks down in Mahoney County have filed with their probate judge to have the uh, Mahoney County Metro Parks Board removed as well. Um, so they, they've done it already. So we already know what's all involved in it and we are going to proceed with that. Um, I understand completely that the commissioners do not control that Metro parks board. You have no say in what they do, no authority whatsoever. However, I'm going to reiterate again, you do control the money that this County budgets to them every year. That is, um, taxpayer dollars that you're doing that to, um, we we should be fiscally responsible when we're doing these things. Um, and I, I I don't feel as a taxpayer that I want to promote them to be able to do anything. Um, as far as, you know, what about the rest of the parks? Everything has an issue because of their lack of planning and basic anything going on between their ears of, of what they're going to do with the place. I mean, everything is not being maintained. They have no funds set up for maintenance. They have no plan set up for maintenance. There is nothing. And why throw more bad money, more money after a bad issue? Um, in addition to the possibility of the 15, well, it's not a possibility. We're going to file the 1545.06. But there's also a provision in the higher revised code under 1545.36, which is a petition for disillusionment of the district. And people say, why would we want to do away with our parks? This petition would not do away with the parks if we come through with it because 
anything that they currently own can go into um, any department of the county. It can go into the municipality that um, the park's in. For example, Canoe City could go to Warren Township. Warren Township already has parks at Johnson Community Center. We have a beautiful community center there. We have ball fields. We have tennis courts. We have playground equipment. And those things are already maintained through our township. It would be nothing for Warren Township to take on Canoe City and maintain it. Um, Warren Township in the past has offered, because of the concerns of the liability of the dam, Warren Township has offered to, to foot the bill for the insurance on it or just give us the dam and, we'll, and it'll take, it, they'll be our responsibility. Um, so my question is, is how five people who are appointed to a board will jeopardize what they have because it can all be gone away between petitioning for the removal and the petitioning of um, the disillusionment of the park district itself. We already know everything we have to do. We've researched it. Um, we only need this uh, half the signatures that voted against their levy to begin with. Um, so we, we will take whatever necessary action is required to protect both our environment and public health and safety of our community. Um, our life's count has done that before with the landfill and we're going to do it again. Thank you. Thank you. Very well said. Anybody else have anything for the good of Trumbull County? Yes, sir. Mr. Salamone. Mike Salamone, Trumbull County Transit Administrator. First, I would like to thank the commissioners for, um, uh, for the uh, putting the funding for the grant for running the WRTA routes. And I just wanted to remind them and uh, remind everybody the routes will be starting March 11th. The commissioners have already decided to ride, to ride the routes at 1 p.m. Uh, Dean Harris will be riding the routes with you. And I've been inviting other people to ride the routes. So I just wanted to do this publicly at this time to thank you for doing this. And Commissioner Malloy, um, if you would like me to set up a meeting separately, with Dean Harris afterwards, I have already, I've already actually put that in motion. I think that yeah. that would be appropriate. I mean, there's, you can't have a public meeting. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Bus. Right. No, that's, that's the other thing. To cancel the public meeting on the bus, we could do a press release. You, you, we ride it just like last time, whenever they opened, you go. You Correct. Go. Okay. Would you, would the board like to have a special meeting after no. we ride the bus or would you just want me to meet with Dean independently? Okay. Okay. You could just, just make, make sure we're going to ride. There's going to be discussion, but there will, we will keep our discussion to non decision making things as we ride the bus. Even about the bus, it could be, you know, let him talk to you and you understand. Can... And then I'll set up a separate meeting. Right. We are going to ride the bus, and hopefully, all three commissioners will do that. And that'll be at one o'clock, 1 p.m. And then we're going to ride uh, both routes, both routes. It's, and it's, we, it's the same we encourage. Bus people that have an affiliation with that to join us. Yeah. We need to reach out to the mayor. I've already done that. And and there's uh, their people and uh, some of the people that served in an advisory capacity, right. uh, Tara and Mr. Joseph and other people have come to the meetings and see if they want to join us. In fact, uh, this evening, uh, the mayor, the council meets this evening and I'll be going to that meeting and personally inviting them too. Oh, to also the there was some, there was, um, I'm really grateful that, um, this doesn't have to do with you. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So we're thanks, Mike. Are you done? Okay. okay. We're done. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. You, just, you said something that made my mind think okay. of something else. So the the meeting tonight uh, at Warren City Council is it also um, there's a uh, the tax abatement. They want to actually remove. Uh, they want to remove and replace the previous resolution with the correction instead of starting the whole process over again for the tax abatement. And I don't believe that that's correct. Um, I think that we need to find out because just to actually rescind and then replace something is different than starting out the whole tax abatement process properly. And then it was pointed out that there is still an error on the paper, uh, uh, the document that they'll be planning to replace it with. Uh, and I'm grateful that uh, school, who was it? Um, Patty Limperos sent a very, very well penned letter and an opposition to the board of commissioners. And I, I take that very seriously. And um, also the process, I think um, there was a hiccup in that. Yep, they did. I did get a correspondence this morning that said that they will not be voting on, on that tax uh, issue tonight. 
they will be voting next week. They're going to do a, a second reading of it tonight. But from my understanding, unless I'm understanding this incorrectly, they're making an effort to re rescind and replace it. Right. And that, there's an error in that. That's on them. Until it comes to us, the, what they do with their business is the way they do it. it if it comes to us and it's been done I, wrong, we can do that. I can. I can. Right. I know where I stand with it. Sure. Okay. Thank you. And we we will watch out for that. But I mean, we can't tell them how to do their Warren City business if they're doing it wrong. Uh, that's on them. If it comes to us wrong again, you we can do what we do. Commission is associated with with um the process too. So, um, making sure that it's done correctly should be what our planning commission is doing. So, but okay. Uh, Martha, Yoder. Martha Yoder, Trumbull County Auditor. I just want to go back to um. Commissioner's French Co re French Co's request about adding uh, the original request in. We're going to, I've been texting with Christy, and what we're going to do is add it to that overview sheet so you'll get the total requests that were made on it for each department. But I also want to, uh, and at the budget hearing, so we'll go back to that. We'll add a column for that. But I did want to reiterate, because you were not here, that the process that we have followed since uh, the November hearing has been for Christy to meet with particularly those department heads that had the larger requests to kind of clarify what, why they need things, those kind of things. She's met personally. Uh, well, she met with Chief Palmer from the Sheriff's Office. She's met with Tacey. She's met all of this. None. My point is that none of the numbers that we provided yesterday as recommended numbers came out of thin air. They were all as part of a process. So looking at, it's fine to look at the original request, but understand that there's been a lot of um, water under that bridge since then. And we're gonna do a, a bit of a narrative. I'm gonna have Christy kind of review with me exactly who she's talked to and those kind of things. And we'll include that in there. But I just want you to know that um, the journey from November to this week has been a long one. And it's not just been, oh, well, we think they need that. It's been talking to them about what their priorities are. All of that has gone into these but this but this budget recommendation. I just wanted to make that clear. And we'll get we'll try to get that whole complete package to you by the end of the day. But of course you understand that it was adding a little bit to it. So we're gonna have to she has to spend some time on it. So I, just, it, I, I listen to everything. The the budget is being recommended based on Christie's uh discussion and discussions. Yeah, dis yeah discussions. <laughs> um and the years the last previous years. years. Right. Uh, there's no capital as well and that's i think this, that's right it's all general fund and at this point any of the cap all the capital and that was part of in the meeting with um each of those department heads or their designees was also removing those capital requests and addressing them separately at a different time at this point in time what you will be voting on hopefully next week if that and if it ends up being that on the agenda the way we anticipate will be the general fund as well as other funds, but those are a little different because the general, those are each, you know, uh, elected official has their own fund. We did not do a whole lot with those. What we're concerned about is the general fund. We're basically journalizing other elected officials funds at that point. All right. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Mr. Glenn. I'm from the city of Niles. Um, I just want to start out by saying I appreciate the enthusiasm that the townships bring to this meeting. But I also want to say that this governing board governs for all Trumbull County citizens. And I think the citizens of Trumbull County deserve the right to hear each one of your three's opinions. For some reason, Ms. Frenchko, I, I can't even hear in the back of the room and I have two hearing aids in. Uh, that's that's disrespect as far as I'm concerned to the citizens of this county. Um, number two is, I think last week, Ms. Bond, the director of 911, she made a statement that Ms. Frenchko has abused the 911 system. And if if she feels that any other citizen that has 
abused the 911 system should be charged, I think she should go ahead and charge Ms. Frenchko with that crime. When you consider further ARPA monies, please ensure that they are going to help the county as a whole. Uh, I heard these requests for ambulances. Ambulances are there primarily for the transport of people that need medical assistance. You know, uh, I think those should be a, a top priority. Communities now are, uh, they've always had to contract out for ambulance services. If they have their own, they have the personnel to man them. It, it should be a priority. Um, these dam issues, I'm not fully aware of, of the situations, but I do know that I think some of these dams being demolished, is that of an overall bigger picture for the future of residents in this county, for recreation, for, uh, you know, developers to come in and, and like the residents have said, to live on the water, to be able to go to the water, uh, it, it is relaxing. But please don't, don't give money to where it could possibly be screwing us in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Do we have anybody on the phone lines there? You can hit star six and meet yourself and announce who you are and where you're from. Uh, a second. Nobody there? Okay. Motion and a second. Ms. French Cow? Yes. Mr. Cantola Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Good deal, Jason.